what's up guys welcome to episode 28 of retro buyer's guide i'm mike and today we're going to take a look at emulating retro game titles for the newest console generation playstation just released a handful of playstation 2 titles for the ps4 on the playstation store and they're pretty neat because they've all been upgraded to 1080p resolution and they play at 60 frames a second which is pretty awesome uh, but I did want to make a comparison video to show you what it's like to play the original games on the original hardware uh, through a PlayStation 2 with component video out through an upscaler versus playing it on the PlayStation 4 with all the new bells and whistles. Now, there are some pretty cool titles that have been released. Hopefully, they'll keep pumping them out each Tuesday. Uh, one of them being Dark Cloud, which is a really excellent RPG for the uh, PlayStation 2, and uh, Twisted Metal Black which is a pretty fun, I guess you would call it like a vehicular shooter uh, that uh, is pretty fun to play. It's also slightly cheaper, which is a little interesting. But today we're mostly going to be looking at uh, Rogue Galaxy, which is one of my favorite uh, PlayStation 2 RPGs. Now, of course, there's also the Wii U, which has the virtual console, and you can play a handful of titles for the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, uh, Nintendo DS, and the Game Boy Advance. So we'll take a look at some of those titles. Oh, as, as well as the Wii. I forgot about the Wii. So we'll be taking a look at some of those titles as well and what it's like to play them on the original hardware versus the Wii U Virtual Console. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let's check out Rogue Galaxy for the PlayStation 4. Again, this game was originally released in 2006 by Level 5 for the PlayStation 2. I really like Level 5 games. I think they put out uh, pretty good stuff, including recently Yokai Watch for the 3DS. I've been enjoying that one a lot. So the story so far. The war that divides the galaxy has cast its shadow upon the distant desert planet Rosa. Highly valued for its natural resources, Rosa has been put under direct control of the Longardian Federation in an attempt to prevent invasion by the Draxian Empire. Under Longardia's watchful eye, the enslaved Rosans now find themselves forbidden to leave the planet. Let's check out the first cutscene of the game. As you can see, the game has some really nice cell shaded animation that really shines when it's upscaled to 1080p resolution, playing at 60 frames a second. Of course, the original PlayStation can't get anywhere near that, so I think Sony did a really good job with the emulation on this port. Let's check out another cutscene, this one using the game engine itself. The information came from a credible source. He's here, all right. He should be hiding out somewhere on Rosa. Desert Claw. He's one of the galaxy's top hunters. Maybe he got his mitts on a load of dosh and he's off living it up somewhere. Can't believe he'd be wasting his time on this slave rock. Don't worry, he's somewhere on this planet. My instincts are infallible. And here's some of the game in action. As you can see, it runs really smooth. There are no hiccups that I detected in my playthrough. I also noticed that the loading time seems slightly improved from the original PlayStation 2 release. So that's pretty nice as well. So the big question is how much are all of these improvements worth to you, especially if you played through Rogue Galaxy once before? Currently, the majority of the PlayStation 2 remasters for the PlayStation 4 are going for about $14.99 a piece, which is pretty steep for a lot of people, judging from the feedback on the internet. However, I think for a game like Rogue Galaxy, which routinely sells for about $20 to $30 a piece on the used secondhand market, $15 for an old game with a new coat of paint might not seem like that bad, especially if you've never played it before. Of course, collectors are always going to want a physical copy of the games that they're collecting. But I think for a digital-only release, $15 is not that bad. Yes, you can emulate this game on your PC and do it that way, but if you want to be legitimate, I don't think $15 is a bad way to show Sony that you support what they're doing and you want them to release more PS2 games. To give you a little more of a comparison, here is Rogue Galaxy, the director's cut, playing on an original PlayStation 2. Let's check out the first cutscene of the game. I 
I think it still looks pretty good, but you can definitely tell a difference between the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 4 version. Now here is some of the game in action on a PlayStation 2. You can also tell a little bit of a slight difference. Again, none of this actually diminishes the fun of the game itself. We're only talking visuals here. Um, but I do think the PlayStation 4 version looks really nice compared to the PlayStation 2 version. Now let's take a look at the two running side by side. Here we have the PlayStation 4 version on the left and the PlayStation 2 version on the right. Can you tell a difference? So let's check out the Wii U Virtual Console. The Wii U Virtual Console is pretty interesting because of what Nintendo decided to do with the emulation of Nintendo games. So you can see we're going to check out Mega Man 2 here. It looks pretty dark and muddy. And that's because I believe some kind of filter that Nintendo put on the NES games gives everything kind of a brown, muddy tint to it that um, I don't really like. It's definitely not the same as playing it on the original hardware where the colors are more vibrant and they stand out more on screen. To give you an idea, let's check out Mega Man 2 on an original NES. And as you can see right from the get-go, the colors are more vibrant, the blues stand out more, and as we get into the stage here, you can see the greens stand out more. Overall, it just looks better, it looks more pleasing to the eye. Now that being said, if you don't mind the way the game looks so much, uh, the Wii U Virtual Console NES titles are usually only about $4.99 or $5 a piece, and they play pretty much the same. And I would say the uh, the sound emulation is uh, pretty close to the original hardware. So if that look doesn't bother you, then I would say go ahead and buy the NES Virtual Console titles for the Wii U. They do support save states and button remapping. Let's check out a side-by-side -side comparison. We have the Wii U version of Double Dragon on the right and Double Dragon on an original NES on the left. What do you think? Now by contrast, the Wii U Super Nintendo emulation is vastly superior, and the games run about $7.99 a piece. Here we have Super Castlevania for the Super Nintendo, and I think it looks pretty fantastic on the Wii U's Virtual Console. But like the others, to give you a comparison, let's check out Super Castlevania on the original Super Nintendo and the Wii U Virtual Console. That's going to do it for this episode of Retro Buyer's Guide. Thanks so much for watching. If this is your first time watching, please subscribe so you can keep up with future videos. And thanks so much to all the new subscribers. I'll see you again in a week with a new video. Until then, happy collecting.